so we make kind of spiritual assumptions about why things happen for a reason and you know we were always trying to explain away the you know the the, the darkness and the tragedies and the struggles that we have in life there's always this this element in us trying to explain well mm-hmm. why does this happen and so yeah. the god image is serves as well there's this deity that's going to make everything better or resolve the injustice of the world that we we look to yeah so uh if if we look at western mythology <clears throat> and to some extent the the religious uh kind of myths that have been central to the west uh the the idea that we are created in god's image mm. goes along with this idea right the, the god imago meaning humans are an expression of that god image mm-hmm. and in the mythology right it's that um god created us in his image mm-hmm. like uh, the son you're and the children daughter, of god <laughs> right children of god in the garden and all that uh so what does that mean um psychologically mm-hmm. that right that would be the the young in approach what does that mean psychologically so the myth is essentially giving us a truth in in allegory and mm-hmm. metaphor and story mm-hmm. form what does that mean practically for mm-hmm. us and here uh, i think the the eastern uh they have a more sophisticated way of understanding consciousness in the mind and it helps us decipher the myth mm-hmm. so let's say the mythology is saying okay you're created in the image of god i'm sure it doesn't mean that god looks like us <laughs> right physically yeah that he has a body or of course uh, that would be a, a very literal interpretation yeah, but like that's like an old man and with the beard i remember in church raised catholic the, there was an image of god even in the assisting chapel that's right the, a guy with old guy with a beard touching adam and there's god and man and yes the child children of of, of god yeah and, and mythology is beautiful in in that artistic and poetic sense but it's not it wasn't meant to be interpreted literally mm-hmm. because obviously you know it doesn't make sense that the creator of the universe would have a body like a human being and uh, then also that the when we talk about eastern philosophy the the idea of the material versus conscious universe that there's a place called heaven or there's a place called hell yeah. that we go to you know that are and then god's going to meet us there he physically meet us there right Although it's a nice story that we'd like to tell ourselves to feel more like less scared about death and life and and why bad people won't get away with anything, you know. You mean the myth? Yeah. Yeah, well, the myth of heaven and hell and Well, that that's the thing that these myths they're not when you don't take them literally, then they give you a deeper answer. Yes. Because you're understanding them as they're they're talking about uh in in a symbolic language they're talking about something deeper Mm -hmm. in that that we are created in the image of god consciously Mm -hmm. that at the core of our human psyche is this pure awareness this consciousness that is identical to the creative mind Mm -hmm. of the universe Mm -hmm. that's what it means and it's encoded right there in that mythology but obviously, if you misread it or if you think, well, that's just a story, um, you know, to to uh, to kind of calm our, our nerves <laughs> <laughs> or feel like we're not alone in the universe, right? But that 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 would be a misreading of the mythology. Mm. Mythology, according to Jung, it spontaneously arises from the psyche, like a dream arises from the psyche, mm-hmm. <laughs> and so these myths arose from the human psyche uh, in a way to explain the higher mysteries of who we are That's but right. then it's just like a dream if we take it literally yes. and we don't look at it from its mythological um, messaging and symbology then we miss out 